Hey guys, what is up? Red Panda Mining here. How you guys all doing? I hope you're all doing really well and having a really great day. In this video, I want to talk about Ethereum Classic, and apparently they have rejected ProgPal as the implementation uh, for the algorithm. And apparently now SHA-3 has gained or garnered more support as the algorithm uh, to be. So. I want to go through a lot of different stuff here, facts, just thought-provoking, and I would love to get your guys' opinion in the comments down below. And also, please check out my description where I have a straw poll, okay? So now that ProgPow prog is out, uh, would you guys rather just stick with ETHash, okay, the current algorithm, or move to SHA-3, okay? So feel free to vote. I would love for you guys to vote for those that are... Uh, invested and interested in in mining ethereum classic I know a lot of you guys are and I would love to get just some opinion and just some more votes here just to understand w better to understand what you guys feel about this algorithm change possible possible algorithm change okay I did make a video regarding the ethereum classic mining algorithm discussion back on November 8th okay and where they were going to discuss this on, I guess, a couple days ago. And I did another straw poll, okay, on this video. And you guys voted here. Not very many of you, only 44 votes. That's why I do want to do another one here. So link in the, link in the description, guys. Please vote. And here I asked, which Ethereum Classic algor algorithm do you think they should move to? And most of you guys voted uh, half and half for ETHash and ProgPow. Uh, but now that ProgPow is not, you know, not uh, in contention with the other algorithms anymore, uh, it's just SHA-3 and ETHash. And SHA-3 garnered only 6 votes, okay? 14% of the pie here. And uh, I'm going to read through this article here on AMB Crypto uh, that has a lot of different stuff here, okay? So hopefully this will help understand why they want to move to ProgPow. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, SHA-3 and I'm gonna I'm gonna start with that. So let, let's begin guys. Why the shift? Okay While the Ethereum community wants to shift existing proof-of-work out al mining algorithm with the intent to make mining egalitarian, okay, so this is just meaning equal uh, equal opportunities, okay uh, Ethereum Classic held a discussion moving on moving away from ETHash as the algorithm was first introduced as a temporary stay on Ethereum till proof-of-stake Okay, that makes sense. Since the DAO hack, which resulted in a chain split uh, creating Ethereum Classic and Ethereum, the latter still leads in the in terms of majority chain, even though Ethereum Classic is often dubbed as the original Ethereum, as it continued on the old chain. This in turn makes Ethereum Classic susceptible to a 51% attack, even by mid-sized mining pools. Okay, so that is true. That is 100% true, okay? And if you guys don't know what 51% attack is, it's basically garnering 51% more uh, of the hash rate of a, of a certain proof of work chain. Okay, so uh, example, example, back in, let's see here, January 13th of 2019, there was a 51% attack on Ethereum Classic. Okay, if you guys don't remember, I, I forgot how much Ethereum Classic was uh, double spent, but it was a lot. Uh, like I think a couple million or something, and uh, in terms of fiat value, I don't know how many Ethereum Classic, but there was a 51% attack here, and you can see the hash rate jumped from 9 terahash to almost 12 terahash. Okay, so somebody, somebody out there rented or I'm not sure, maybe had a huge farm able to. I think it was rented, uh, rented uh, from a. Uh, let's similar like a nice hash or something and I want to show you guys right now nice hash Okay, I'm on their algorithms list here, and they have uh, Currently you can rent out probably 5.5 tera hashes right now on dagger Hashimoto uh, aka ETH hash so 5.5 tera hash right now. I mean it would cost a lot I think it would cost about seven or eight Bitcoin to rent out that much tera hash uh, that's a lot of Bitcoin, a lot of money, but for theoretically, you could literally 51% attack. Uh, let's go back to the heart rate, uh, hash rate chart here. You can literally 51% attack Ethereum Classic 
right now if you wanted. Uh, as the Ethereum Classic hash rate currently is 9.5 terahashes. So if you theoretically rented this much this much hash rate, 5.5, you could 51% attack. Okay. Now, that's yeah. So that's 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 51% attack, and uh, that happened to Ethereum Classic. So that is one of the reasons why they they are having discussions on moving away from the algorithm. Okay. Okay. So let's let's continue here. Uh, I'm going to read here. ETC is not considering changing the mining algorithm. The core devs agree that there would need to be a lot more coordination and information before thinking about such a drastic change. ETC is one of the world's pu major public blockchains, which is true, top 20 or top 15. Uh, so the changing min mining algorithm is a big idea. Uh, but it's just an idea at this stage. We already know the risks are profound, the reasons are unclear, and the merits are unknown. The last part here, the merits, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about something down below which involves ASICs and the ASIC companies. I don't I don't want to start any conspiracies here. I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna go. There. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that that's that's happened before. So anyway, let's let's keep going here. It would not prevent a 51% attack, okay, if we move to SHA-3, apparently, because we don't know if the existing mining community would mine on the new algorithm, okay? So that's where I wanted to talk about getting more of a more of a vote here from you guys. Link in the description, please vote if you want to stick with ETHash or move to SHA-3, okay? And I'd love to give your guys' opinions. Uh, the idea would reach compelling reasons and a lot of research before we could begin, even begin considering it, 100%. Okay, so now um, the reason why ProgPow was rejected, the main, the main thing that I read uh, in this article was that the big thing was uh, because of the person behind ProgPow, which was uh, Christy Lay Meinhan, or if Def else, the the basically the 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 person who wrote ProgPow. Okay, so. Christy Lay Meinhan, okay, Ogata girl. Um, apparently, she was uninvited to an ETC, ETC summit, and apparently, she had a connection with Craig Wright and Associates, uh, which is really weird. But I, I don't know what to think about this. This is kind of this is kind of stupid, in my opinion, to either to to not implement a a, a pretty amazing algorithm implementation because of uh, uh, because of a person. <laughs> so. Anyway, I withdrew her invitation after finding about the connections between herself, Core Scientific, and Craig Wright. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so I don't really care about that kind of uh, drama stuff. I think that's pretty stupid, but uh, I'd love to know what you guys think about that. And uh, the next part here, they stated, uh, I have to view ProgPow as a serious risk to any project which adopts it and would urge the Ethereum community to community to strongly reconsider whether it is wise to proceed unless significantly stronger guarantees can be given around the IP. <sighs> Interesting. Okay, now guys, now I want to read here the implementation for SHA-3 for people that, uh, I guess the devs, the devs that want to implement SHA-3, okay? So I want to read here, during the discussion uh, it was Steve that stated there had to be more research and data on SHA-3 in order to be sure that it would not be susceptible for, to a 51% attack. This aside, questions surrounding ASIC on the network were also brought up during the discussion. Okay, So, here we go. Alex said, okay, these are all devs I believe, introduction and motivation on SHA-3, has reservations, SHA-3 needs some work done, uh, good way for liberation, high performance. Alex says, Okay, Alex is, I believe, the writer for SHA-3, the person that is working, the developer that's working on SHA-3. He says, we want ASICs on the network. Wei says, we should have ASICs first. Tomek, without ASICs, we don't know efficiency and security concerns. Zach, we won't get ASICs unless we change the algorithm. Mike, GPU and FPGA performance for SHA-3 is very good and energy efficient. Terry says, Technical benefits are not clear enough to do drastic change. Alex says, what's not clear? Security or benefits? Steve, we need more research and data. How can we be sure not being 51% attacked? Uh, Yaz says, consider security of Nakamoto consensus, which I believe he's talking about Bitcoin. Uh, Yaz, 
ETHash was designed for Ethereum to sustain ETH until POS. Afri states his opinion, no conclusion yet. Next call to be announced uh, for the remaining decisions probably in January of 2020. Okay, so in about two months or so. Now, this is where I wanted to talk about that SHA-3 is very, very FPGA and ASIC friendly, which I have stated many times before in previous videos. Uh, now I want to read. I'm going to read through this major part here, which I believe a lot of people would care about. Uh, addressing the concerns of Ethereum Classic community, Alex Tankov, the an Ethereum Classic developer working on SHA-3 mining algorithm, I mentioned that earlier, uh, told AMB, AMB Crypto that at present SHA-3 was the safest hashing algorithm in the world, adding that it has the highest performance and good resistance to quantum computers, which has been proven by cryptographers. Okay, so there was a test uh, to prove that. Okay, uh, with regard to ASICs on the network, he stated that the team had confirmation from ASIC manufacturers. Again, with regard to ASICs on the network for SHA-3, he stated that the team had confirmation from ASIC manufacturers Bitmain and Epic Blockchain, as well as Atom Miner, Fusion Silicon, and that they will make SHA-3 miners for ETC. Sankov said. Now. I would love to know if there is any merit underlying the Alex Tankov's underlying benefit. I, I would love to know. Coins always always claim ASIC resistance, and for now, Ethereum Classic, who've, who's had a huge mining community since the very beginning of, of GPU miners, uh, we, I, which I have discussed before, which I have also talked with, with, with many people, Many people are not going to mine Ethereum Classic if they are going to go to SHA-3. The only people that are going to move to SHA-3 are these centralized big players that have 240 volt in their home that's going to centralize this coin if you move to SHA-3. In my opinion. In my opinion. You're not going to have typical... typical. We're not going to have residential miners mining SHA-3 if it is not efficient enough, as SHA-3 is made, made for ASIC and FPGAs, okay? And uh, I've talked about this before, that's one of my uh, big big opinions and I guess really knowledge of, of if SHA-3 is going to be implemented. I really don't think, uh, it, you know, it, the devs of a coin can do what they feel is right, but the outcome, we have no idea. And depending on how many people are invested in Ethereum Classic. I know a lot of my community is, but we are probably going to stop mining Ethereum Classic if SHA-3 is implemented. I am definitely not going to go out and go go to Bitmain's website and, or, you know, Atom Miner. Actually, I have an Atom Miner. I, I will do a video on SHA-3 if, if, if this is, uh, if this is going to happen. So example, a 1080 Ti getting 700 mega hash at 300 watts. Uh, Adam Miner gets 540 mega hash at 18 watts. Okay, look at look at that efficiency, which is amazing. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that's not good, but that's that's in a technology standpoint that's amazing. Um, but from the standpoint of of decentralization, centralization, uh, I don't know. I there's a lot of different arguments out there. I I don't think I am the person who can. <sighs> Who can really uh, give a, a strong opinion regarding the economics of a coin, hash rate, the number of people, the type of hardware that's going to be used for mining? Um, people could argue that you know centralization between brands of hardware brands, AMD, Nvidia, basically two GPU companies. Is that considered centralization? Or from what I think of different IP addresses coming out of different people's houses uh, IP address if you have a different IP address for a different mo a different a different miner thus that is kind of decentralizing the network right because you're having multiple different IP addresses for mining uh, a certain coin decentralized okay uh, that's more of a from a network standpoint but the economics are huge it's huge i i cannot cover through all that difficulty network hash rate price price fluctuations all that kind of stuff that all factors into you know people getting into a coin profitability of a coin especially if we're talking ethereum classic you know um so many different things out there 
Uh, anyways, I think that was the end of the article here. Actually, I wanted to read one last part here. ETC has a daily issuance of around 100,000 a day of new tokens. This is almost 33 million a year, which makes it very attractive for new manufacturers to build ASICs. So I am not worried there are already SHA-3 ASICs on the market for very small coins, which there are. I believe there is. Uh, it is very easy to build a SHA-3 ASIC, even easier than it is to build a SHA-2 Bitcoin ASIC with many manufacturers will be able to participate and there are open plans online. While SHA- okay, this last part, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of confused. While SHA-3 has gained support in the community, I haven't seen any straw polls, I haven't seen any votes, I haven't seen anything on the Ethereum Classic Discord regarding people gain, supporting the SHA-3 move. The only thing that I've seen is from developers. Some of the de developers. Not all, but some of the developers are wanting SHA-3. Uh, its future with Ethereum Classic will most likely be clear during the next meeting on the subject, which is likely to take place early next year. Okay, so I mentioned a lot of different things here. I don't think I was that clear on my opinion uh, or the things that I talked about. There's a lot of different stuff here. and. I would love to get your guys' opinion here uh, regarding SHA-3 and moving towards the algorithm, why they shouldn't or why they should. Uh, centralization, decentralization, 51% attack. Are us, us GPU miners going to move to SHA-3? Uh, going to move to Ethereum Classic? Are we going to still support Ethereum Classic if they move to SHA-3? I highly doubt it as it won't be efficient on GPUs, but I would love to know what you guys think. I'm sorry this was a very long video, but I had to voice my concern and uh, some facts here, some information, and I know that a lot of you guys are invested in Ethereum Classic as well, uh, in terms of mining and uh, I guess a profitability standpoint as well. Um, so anyways, thank you guys for watching, let me know what you think, and please vote on the straw poll that I have down below, I would really love to get your guys' opinion here. And I would, I would like to gauge my community on the situation for SHA-3 or ETH. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the, in the next video. Smash the like button, all that good stuff. And feel free to use my affiliate links down below. It helps me and helps out the channel for any projects that I do. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. And peace out.